Hi, welcome to the interview with the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Mr. Gaston Browning. Uh, Mr. Gaston Brown, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, how was the atmosphere that you feel in this uh, new period of the United Nations General Assembly? Yeah, well, you know, it's an important um, assembly um, for us to um, hear our views on various hemispheric and international issues. Uh, there are many issues, even within our own hemisphere, the issue of um, Haiti, um, stabilizing Haiti, uh, restoring democracy, and, you know, perhaps we can, for once and for all, I mean, put Haiti on the path of um, prosperity. Uh, so that is one of the hemispheric issues. Um, you know that the issue of climate change, that is a global issue. It is the most uh, significant existential threat facing all of humanity. Uh, small states in the Caribbean, we are on the front lines of um, climate change. We continue to suffer from the consequences of these um, ferocious storms, frequent storms, and uh, the even other aspects of um, climate change. Uh, that is hurting us, uh, practically all aspects of um, climate change, so ocean acidification, the bleaching of um, our um, coral reefs, uh, sea level rise as a result of the warming of the seas, um, heat waves, um, droughts, floods, all of the consequences. So, you know, the United Nations um, uh, General Assembly give us the opportunity to come here and to speak about um, those issues. Uh, more recently, we have seen a uh, proliferation of um, ammunition and um, guns uh, and uh, guns and, um, and ammunition mm -hmm. and uh, we are seeing an increase in homicides as a result of these guns but the irony is they're not manufactured in the Caribbean they're imported primarily from the United States they represent a significant threat to us in terms of um, the amount of homicides in fact we now have about three times uh, the amount of um, homicides per thousand uh, of the global average and it is because of um, you know those guns that have been imported in the Caribbean uh, obviously mostly used by those involved in the narcotics trade uh, but you're also using those guns to hurt innocent people mm -hmm. uh, that's an issue that um, many of us would have addressed um, during this assembly there's also the looming threat of um, autonomous weapons uh, I know that developed countries are using them to target um, uh, the enemies, but if they get in the hands of the wrong individuals, they can become a serious threat for us. Uh, you know, they use um, facial recognition technology and um, they can program these um, drones to hurt you. I recall some years ago, there's one that was used in um, Venezuela, in which they're trying to take out um, President Maduro. Uh, so uh, certainly the people of Venezuela can identify with the threat of these um, autonomous um, weapons. And I'm saying here that um, you know it's a very significant threat, and we are certainly advocating for a treaty that will um, control or maybe ban the production of um, that type of um, technology that, that that could be so um, lethal uh, to our people and obviously could undermine our development. Uh, so there are a myriad of issues: um, in climate, the issues with Cuba and um, Venezuela. Uh, we think what um, the United States um, is doing to Cuba is cruel and um, we continue to advocate for the sanctions to be lifted. Uh, they say, for example, that um, Cuba is involved in states, um, space state-sponsored terrorism. They know it's not true, and they need to take them off the list. I mean, the situation in uh, Venezuela, uh, we have made a plea as well for them to um, discontinue the um, sanctions against Venezuela. Uh, they're hurting the Venezuelan people. They are literally um, contributing to the exodus of Venezuelans because of the hardships that the sanctions have created. But even in, within the Caribbean region, uh, those of us who benefited from Petro Caribbean, we too are suffering and we're innocent. We haven't done anything to offend the United States, but at the same time, we can't avail ourselves of um, fuel from Pedavesa, which in the past would have acted as a price stabilization mechanism for Caribbean countries uh, who were getting um, petroleum products on the Petro Caribbean. Uh, so these are some of the inequities that we continue to advocate within the um, UN um, Forum. And uh, we're hoping that, you know, our voices will not fall in deaf ears and that there will be some transformational changes that will down to the benefit of all. In your speech, you said that the war was um, forgotten the developing countries. What do you mean? Well, I literally quoted um, uh, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General. He said that um, the uh, world has failed uh, developing countries, and that is true. Uh, there are so many issues um, plaguing us and um, issues that we did not create. I mean, the problem with climate, 
Uh, it's not as a result of um, developing countries, barring a few emerging economies now like China and um, India that are now involved in the profligate use of um, fossil fuels. Uh, the historical emitters would have been the large, powerful um, developed countries. So they were the ones who created the problem with um, climate change, and um, developing countries are suffering the consequences. Even the whole issue about um, developed countries making adequate um, funding available uh, for um, loss and damage, for adaptation and mitigation, we continue to struggle to get them to respond. And we're the ones who have to contend with these climate events. We have to borrow at high interest rates in order to recover our economies, um, you know, damage buildings. Uh, they're literally destroying lives and livelihoods in um, developing um, countries as a result of the profligate use of um, fossil fuels. Uh, and again, you know, we have been pressing through these cops for them to reduce the emissions. And you know, our plea has fallen in deaf ears to the extent that we're getting dangerously close to that 1.5. And the interesting thing is if we get up to 1.5, we know or exceed 1.5, uh, then there will be irreparable damages. And again, it is um, developing countries that will suffer the most, especially SIDS, small island and um, developing states. And we have made a point too that the issue of climate justice and reparatory justice, they're inextricably linked. I mean, they're the ones who, um, in the first instance, um, enslaved our forebears, had them work centuries for free, while they repatriated all the prophecy of Europe and North America to build out their economies. As a result, they're extremely wealthy and uh, they would have benefited from the Industrial Revolution. And the waste from the Industrial Revolution would have polluted our planet to the extent that the same people who suffered under slavery are now suffering climate injustice. You know, so the, 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 these, yeah, these are very vexing issues, you know, and uh, we think that we have a right um, to live comfortably on the earth and to enjoy the earth resources, uh, not for the resources to be capitalized by one group of um, countries called developed countries, uh, but for us to benefit equitably because, you know, we're fundamentally one and the same people. You know, we all had a common grandmother 200,000 um, years ago. Uh, notwithstanding, you know, differential in hair texture, color of skin and eyes and so on, we are one and the same. And it means, therefore, there has to be global cooperation, there has to be um, greater multilateralism as we cooperate to resolve all of the threats facing the planet, um, facing all of humanity, and not to leave um, some people impoverished while the mighty and the wealthy continue to um, live comfortably. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, we may be the first, for example, uh, to go based on the climate damages, but their fate will be no different because their time will come too. Prime Minister, uh, speaking about IT, what uh, are you agree with this uh, propose? The, um, somebody proposed you know, to send a, a special force. There, there, there are many proposals. Uh, the reality is the, situ the situation in Haiti has to be resolved. Uh, I'm of the view it has to be internally led, and I'm a little disappointed in the sense that um, the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Henri, is not taking a kind of leadership. Uh, what seems to be required now is a broad-based government that can provide a kind of leadership. Uh, with the support of the international community to have this multilateral force to assist with the um, stabilization of the country to address the issue with the gangs while at the same time providing financial resources to deal with the humanitarian um, crisis and also to concurrently restore uh, the democratic institutions so that they can have presidential elections and to uh, elect a new president as soon as possible. Uh, so that is the general framework and again as I said before it has to be Haitian led and supported by the regional and international community. What are the major problems that the uh, people from the Caribbean countries are facing right now? Well the most significant threat for us um, at this point um, is climate change and it is the most significant existential threat facing all of humanity. Uh, so, you know, we continue to um, advocate um, strenuously. We've even taken the matter to um, the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea in Hamburg. The hearing um, continues um, until the 25th, started on the 11th of September. And uh, we are literally trying to hold these large polluters um, accountable so that we can protect our lives and livelihoods in the Caribbean. Uh, so climate change is, is more significant. We also have the issue of debt. Uh, you know, we've had to borrow repeatedly to, re to repair damaged infrastructure, and that in itself would have um, created a debt overhang. So we also need to find creative ways to uh, place our debt on a sustainable pathway. Uh, we've been pushing the national community to provide debt restructuring, debt swaps, or debt for climate swaps. 
and um, other mechanisms to assist us to achieve some level of debt um, sustainability. But again, they have not been very responsive and we just have to continue to fight on. Um, I, I have to take the opportunity to um, thank um, President Maduro in that he would have assisted a number of Caribbean countries, including Antigua and Barbuda, with a partial um, debt write-off of 50% of the amounts owed. Uh, for the petroleum products, and that in itself would have helped to reduce our debt to GDP. Uh, I believe Jamaica, St. Vincent and Grenadines, and other countries that have benefited. And you know what is interesting? You have a um, country that is struggling, providing that kind of relief for others, and you find wealthy countries, even the United States in this hemisphere, which is the wealthiest country on the planet, uh, you know, has not been um, or have not been as um, responsive as even countries that do not quite have resources. So, kudos to. President Maduro and the government and people of Venezuela for the responsiveness to the needs of the Caribbean people. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister Brown, for your time with Telesur today. Thank you very Thank you. much. Cheers. Blessings. Good.